Hi everyone, welcome to the 39th webinar in 12D's training webinar series. My name is Lisa Stewart and I'm the Marketing and Communications Coordinator at 12D Solutions. 12D's training webinars showcase common industry challenges, taking a close look at industry best practices and how these can be implemented using 12D products. The aim of these webinars is to upskill 12D users and broaden their understanding of the capabilities of 12D products. We run these webinars regularly and record them for posting through our website and on YouTube. The first 38 webinars from this training series, as well as the 33 webinars from our Industry Solutions series, are available on our YouTube channels if you missed those. During this live presentation, you'll be able to type your questions along the way. We'll put some instructions on the screen. We'll answer as many as possible of those throughout the webinar. And at the end, I'll read out some of your questions to the presenter for his insights, if there are questions today. Today's webinar, Batter Slope Tadpoles, will be presented by Tim Brooks, who has been with 12D Solutions for over four years as the 12D Model and 12D Synergy Training Manager. Tim coordinates and writes 12D Model Training Manuals and writes the 12D Synergy Training Manuals. A civil designer with 20 years of experience in the civil industry, both around Australia and in the UAE, Tim has worked on a variety of civil projects, including motorways, highways, local roads, industrial and subdivision estates, car parks and rail projects. It's webinars like today's that allow us to show items within 12D model that we don't get to demonstrate in regular training courses. The Tadpoles Advanced feature is one of these. This is a great automatic batter slope fit symbol feature that really puts the finishing touches on your design. This webinar will show you how to set it up and apply it to your design functions. Over to you, Tim. Thanks, Lisa. Previous to version 12, the closest you could apply tadpoles to your design automatically was by using the tadpoles in the apply MTF function. It has limited abilities, for example, you can only specify spacing of a tadpoles by interval. Also, if tadpoles went from being between two strings to a different scenario, like adding a table drain, it would require workarounds to get this feature to work. An example here would be by adding a temporary duplicate string. You can see this in this panel. On the left here, you can see the interface string goes between the edge of verge and interface string, the tadpole. However, when the drain is added, the tadpole no longer goes between the same two strings. So to get this feature to work, a temporary string or a tadpole string would be inserted on the last fixed string and it would get pushed out automatically over the new string. Therefore, in the panel, allowing something like this to occur, the temp string to interface, and then where, the, where you needed another string tadpoled, you could go between the edge of verge and drain front, like here. However, the new tadpole advanced is a new fully automatic way of displaying the tadpoles on your layouts. Tadpoles advanced uses a definition style to know which strings to place the tadpoles or batter symbols between. The definition style can be applied on its own panel or in the apply MTF function panel. The location for these are found under strings, label, cut and fill, and, there it, and in there, there is the new tadpoles panel. This allows you to run the tadpoles separately to the apply MTF. However, for this demonstration, we will be running in the apply MTF function. In there also is the new tadpoles definition panel. This is where you can create or amend the tadpole style. So let's go and have a look at this. First of all, let's open up the apply MTF function for this road. In here towards the end, you can see the old tadpoles feature. Again, limited in its capabilities, but now we have the new Tadpoles Advanced feature. To get this to work, simply tick on the Create Tadpoles box. Select your style 
from the pull down with the tadpole style. And then choose what to do with the symbols. There are three options here. Don't explode just makes these kind of like a null string. They will only turn up in plan views. You can choose to drape onto a tin, in which case you must specify which tin you wish to drape them onto. Or there is Z from tadpole strings. This is the option I will use. It will use the Z levels from the two strings the tadpole goes between. In both the drape and the Z from tadpole strings options, will allow the tadpoles to be showing, shown in your OpenGL views or your 3D views. Then select the strings model that you want the tadpoles applied to. This is often the model from the design model from the models tab. Then enter a model in which you want the new tadpoles to go into. Let's go and have a look at the um, where to create the style. So under strings, label, cut and fill, and I'll pin this little panel to my screen. Because in here, we also have the new tadpoles panel. This is the panel that allows you to run the advanced tadpoles separately to your function. Again, just fill it out from top to bottom, select the style, your reference string, what you want to do with the symbols, the model to apply it to, and the model which your tadpoles will go into. Uh, but like I said, we will use the function for this one. Underneath that is the new tadpoles definition panel. This is where we can create or amend the style for our tadpoles definition. I'll just expand this box out a little bit more so you can see it better. To create a new style, simply come up and select add child. This will allow you to give it a name. So over here, you can just enter a name. And then underneath that, you can add your sub styles. So again, depending on the scenario you want to do, you can give it a name. So if it was a fill scenario, I could call it fill. And then after that, I can now come and insert the option that I require, whether it's going to be a single link, paired link, or triple link. I already have a st uh, definition style created to show these. So let's come up and explain it further in here. On this design, in this area here, we have a fill scenario. So I have a sub style called fill batter. And this is just looking for a single link. So I've chosen single strings here. And in that, I enter the name of the string that I'm looking for. In this case, I've chosen IA with a wildcard. This means it will work on both the left and right hand strings. And I've chosen it to look as a fill scenario. After that, you can choose um, your corridor uh, limits. You can also set constraints. Constraints can be set by width, by height, slope, or crossfall. Here you can see I've set a minimum width of two. That's two meters. If we pan around a bit to the left here, you can see that when the strings become less than two meters apart, it no longer tadpoles. After that, we can set our interval. Currently, I'm set to fixed, which has a, an equally spaced tadpole interval. And you can see that all the way around here. However, I can change that to a ratio scenario, and that will use the ratio interval now. The way that works is it looks at the distance between the two strings involved, multiplies it by your ratio, and works out the spacing from that. So if I update my style now and recalculate my function, you can see that the spacing between the interval now varies depending on the distance between the two strings. Also in this area, we have a median drain. <clears throat> so if I scroll up a bit further, I've created a sub style to take care of this. 
And in this case, we're looking between two links. And there are two sets of them for left and right. So this is a paired strings option. Here, you just enter the strings involved. So it'd be the center of the drain and the edge of inside pavement strings on both cases. Also here is the option for adjacent. Currently, I have it set to free. This means that it will always tadpole. The other two options here are no, which means it won't tadpole at all, and yes, which means it will tadpole as long as no other string is inserted in, is inserted in between those two strings. And then finally, there's the cut fill option. And in this case, I've chosen both, not cut or fill, but both. And therefore, it doesn't matter if it's in cut or fill for this scenario. You can see that in the 3D view here as well. <clears throat> On both of those styles, um, down below, below, you can set your symbol styles as well. So on my fill symbols, symbol one was set to 100% and it is using the batter tadpole two symbol. Symbol two set to 50% was using a simple tick style. So therefore we get the tadpole, short tick, tadpole. On the median drain, uh, we're using the same uh, tick style, but for symbol one, it is set to 100%, and symbol two, it is set to 50%. Therefore getting the, the large tick, small tick, large tick, small tick. Gonna use our view favorites here. And I'm gonna go around to the cut area of this job. And again, I've created a cut style for this particular area. Now in the cut section of this job, you can see there are a number of different scenarios. <clears throat> so here we'll use all three. We have a, a single strings option. So looking for the last fixed string to the interface string. So that's this one here, single strings. Again, looking for that IA string, but looking for it in a cut scenario this time. I've also included an exclude here, the IBR string. That, that happens on this side where the IBR is inserted, it will exclude it and still work there. The single string will also work on the outside of our berm. So going from the last fixed string to the interface string. But what happens when the berm is inserted? Well, then it will also then come down and look at our paired strings option. <clears throat> Again, inserting the name of the two strings that are involved here <clears throat> that we want the tadpoles to go between. Again, we have the adjacent option. It is set to free, so it will tadpole no matter what. And in this case, I don't mind whether it's in cut or fill again. I still want the tadpoles to go there. On the other side of the road, however, <clears throat> where this change of slope string is introduced, we will then require a triple string option. Again, list the strings that we want a tab pole between. The interface to the IBR, again, using those wildcards to my advantage, and then the edge of payment string. Again, selecting your adjacent options. So yes will work as long as another string doesn't come between, and then between two and three, I have it will tadpole no matter what. Now this one is set to cut option only. And then below that, we have a deflection percentage. So we've entered 5% here. If we flip to our 3D view, and again, using our view favorites, go to the cut section, you can see where that slope is less than 5% change in grade, it still refers to the single strings area. However, once the 5% kicks in, it then uses the triple strings and applies the second lot of tadpoles. So as you can see, the new tadpole style uh, should handle all your tadpole requirements without having to do those workaround strings. Also, a Tadpulse definition style gets shipped with the 12D model install. So it's a great place to start.
rather than having to create one from scratch. Thanks, Lisa. Thanks, Tim. We've got some great training courses coming up in Brisbane, Melbourne and Perth. We've also got a handout on this webinar outlining what's in some of those. Um, these are just some of the courses we've got in those regions at the moment. So pop onto the training page of our website or contact us by email for more information. And don't forget, our 12D Technical Forum is on in Brisbane this July with the Associated Innovation Awards. The closing date for those is the 30th of April, so enter now for a shot at an amazing prize. The recording of today's webinar will be available in coming days through our website and our YouTube channel. Our next two training webinars are Drainage 2D Advanced on the 3rd of April and 12D Field Setout, Drainage and Other Options on the 18th of April. So if you're water inclined, feel free to sign up for those and many more through our website. We'll keep you posted on all of that through email and social media if you're subscribed. And if you need to contact us in the meantime, our details are on the screen now. That concludes our presentation for today. Thank you all for attending and we hope to see you at future webinars.